Rajiv Metri is still recovering after he was struck down with COVID in April. A cardiology nurse, he says he could count on the support from family, friends and managers. But he says that many in the BAME community haven't been so lucky. One way I'm lucky because of my contacts and the, in the positions in the community and things. But see, everybody is not the same. You know, and I think we need to have a group or the organizations or the associations who need to come forward and help the weaker communities in this kind of situation. That concerns being answered with the launch of a multilingual BAME helpline. It's been set up to respond to the fact that uh, people from black, Asian and minority ethnic backgrounds have been so disproportionately affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, they've been affected directly by the virus itself, but also indirectly by the impact on their education, on their employment, and on their well-being generally. Um, so it's been set up as a first port of call for people from BAME communities who may or may not um, speak English or Welsh. And, you know, the, the, lang the helpline is available in a range of community languages. So it's intended to be an accessible first port of call for uh, people who may not know, you know who else to turn to. The Wales TUC say the helpline will help workers from the BAME community get the help, support and advice they might need in these uncertain times. We felt that you know, with a helpline like this being set up, anything in relation to employment matters, we, we would happily pick them up and then refer the individual on to the appropriate union. And there's 48 affiliated unions in Wales. And, you know, so far, the majority of them are more than happy to be able to support this initiative. Rajiv's illness and recovery has made him very much the centre of attention in his own family. And he's keen to support anything that helps those in the BAME community who might be struggling. It's really good, you know, like using kind of support over the phone itself is, is a good because, you know, during this situation, you can't meet one to one and, you know, you have to maintain the social distance and things. Uh, but for telephone line it will be very, very good idea. Initially, the helpline is a six month pilot project, but clearly the hope is it will become permanent. Ian Lang, ITV News. Oh, you yeah, haven't started yet. No pressure. No pressure. <laughs> they're, they're going to test your video, okay? <laughs> if yours comes better, they will send that to the. <laughs> Don't do any better. <laughs> okay. Okay, happy? Steady? Steady. Okay, I'm ready. Action. Okay, we'll just do the basics first. This happened last time. Pull the camera, I need to know your name. You are. Uh, my name is Rajiv Metri. It's yeah, it's uh, R A J double E V, and my surname is M E T R I Metri. And your role in life, what do you do? Uh, I'm basically a cardiology nurse working in the hospital in the NHS. Is that specific like fluid? Yes. Yeah. There's a chat with you. Rob. Okay, not camera with you. Okay, that's fine. Okay. Actually, COVID, COVID is your story, isn't it? <laughs> yes, yeah. Basically, going back in April, middle of April, I was affected with the COVID, me and my wife both. And uh, we both got treated for that. And uh, my wife got better quickly because maybe because she was regular, you know, she was doing the yoga and uh, meditation and things. But uh, I got severe uh, infection and uh, ended up in the intensive care unit and then uh, I fought between life and death before going to the hospital and then luckily I'm here and uh, survived and came back and then but the recovery is is a really really very 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 slow even though a person very active person like me having uh, you know I've done all the three peaks in uh, Britain and uh, do the cycling, do the cricket, swimming and all those things. But when I wanted to climb the stairs in my house, I, I was only able to do three or four steps at a time. And I couldn't believe it is me at that time. And uh, But it, it's such a slow two to three months. I was not my own normal person. But now I'm happy that I'm into the right recovery path. And I'm not back at work, but I'm in the process of work. So, because you know, with, with the physical side, I'm getting better. 
and you know trying to be healthy and you know I lost a bit of weight and things but the psychological aspect is really bad because maybe it's like a post-traumatic disorder they say you know stress disorder and uh, a lot of thoughts and you know like a lack of sleep and it, it's not only just me I have to think about my family back home parents brothers and all and you know I'm originally from India and it is a lot of uh, family members got affected as well and in this situation nobody can do anything neither and just recently in just last week three of my best friends lost their dads and that's another psychological effect and none of them were able to fly back to their neither funeral to see the family or anything and it, it's not only you know just you know going there but you know again risk of infection to yourself and bringing the infection back to your families spreading in the community and all those things it's really very very badly affects psychologically the world looks a very different place to you now than it did before April. yes definitely yeah, it's completely completely different everything is on hold lockdown schools offices everything is closed and uh, except the hospitals luckily and uh, this all things you know is completely different but there are a lot of positivities happening you know less of full lack of pollutions lack of accidents you know lack of uh, less number of uh, even i work in the cardiac department we don't see as many as heart attacks we used to get the patients including the strokes and all and it's really gone down the numbers don't know why but probably people will rush you know like it's like a rat race isn't it like getting up getting ready stress you know sending the kids to the school maybe the stress level has come down maybe there is a change in the human bodies with the yeah. you know like a, maybe that's the reason i think but for you going through this 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 this, this you know, awful trauma yeah. your, your support your family supporting family here or yeah, yeah but, but anywhere people the people who are concerned or ask to say do you need this and do it where did your support come from I mean, first of all, my support is within the family. That's very, very important, you know, because during this recovery phase, you know, how your husband and wife, you know, as a family with the children, how you get on, that, that makes a big difference because you are living in that world. And if you do not have a good support from a wife or a husband or children, it's really hard to live. Probably, if in my case, if I wouldn't have that kind of uh, support, probably I wouldn't have been here and because it, it goes to that kind of stress levels uh, but as a part of organizations you know it first comes to the managers i have a really really very good manager and i'm very lucky to have her and they have got a very good support in generally but uh, from the trust point i think i'm from the hospital or from the other community areas i haven't seen anyone community organizations coming and approaching me or offering the help or anything obviously you know ITV people came and asked me do you need any financial help or do you want any kind of support or anything but uh, other than that I don't see anything even I am a local counselor here I don't see any kind of support to a person like me helping to the community or anything but uh, uh, I mean as a person our counselors or the colleagues or the mayoress who is in, in charge they are very helpful they are coming and uh, asking me how I am and all but uh, as a group or organizations, I don't have any support. As an individual, your support that you've got comes from, like you said, the respect that people have for you. Yeah. Really have That's exactly, yeah. In society, and people take an interest in you, and the people you work with feel yes. that they like, a, like and respect you. So, in some ways, you are lucky. Yes, exactly, yeah. It's just because of the relationship between the person to person or the individuals. I'm I'm getting very good support, so I, I I do feel I'm very lucky in that in that way. What about people from faith communities who don't have that? Have you seen how da how damaging that will be? It is it is really hard to tell, you know, because BAM community. I think, you know, like uh, if you look at the national percentage and things, you know, I think there are, I think we we represent about 14 percent of the population probably, out of which I think 32 percent of the BAME community who are in the NHS died because of the COVID and uh, I think 80% of the NHS staff are within the BAME community that 80% of them are the frontline workers and uh, obviously you know like they, there is always a risk when you have got a higher percentage of the people frontlines and uh, as organizations you know 
I think personally going through the process, I think we should have some kind of support or a group or people. Yeah, you shouldn't be going around there, I told you. Yeah. It's been being it's been being yeah. It's okay. Yeah. Okay, well, where, where were we? We were saying, you, 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 if you feel like you were talking about the NHS, the people with the extra bit, well, what do you, like, again, as you come to the same, what do you think? You, you talk about this new organisation. What do you think there should be? What do you think? That, that I think we, we need to support them more as a person, as a patient and uh, as a nurse going through the similar kind of situation. And I personally, you know, one way I'm lucky because of my contacts and the, in the positions in the community and things. But see, everybody is not the same, you know. And I think we need to have a group or the organizations or the associations who need to come forward and help the weaker communities in this kind of situation. What do you think? I've told you about these. I mean, this is precisely what they're doing. And they're, they're a staff at Hubline. What, I mean, how do you feel about the fact that somebody's actually doing this? It's a pilot project. How do you feel about the fact that that's actually going to happen? Yeah, it is really good, you know, like using kind of support over the phone itself is, is a good because, you know, during this situation you can't meet one-to-one -one and, you know, you have to maintain the social distance and things. Uh, but for telephone line, it will be very, very good idea to start with. And, you know, then obviously, you know, people will have different, different ideas. And we learn by doing, isn't it? We, we have to just get a, and none of the, none of us are experienced in this kind of situations. And uh, we are, whatever we are doing every day, day by day, we are learning. And I think telephone lines and, uh, you know, like, um, uh, or even the websites, you know, creating the websites and those kind of supports will be really good and grateful to the BAME community. What challenges do the BAME, you know, in, in this, what challenges do the BAME, sorry. Okay. Okay. What challenges do the BAME community have? Can you see that? I think the uh, one of the uh, challenge we we face in the NHS I'm talking about is you know one is we are frontline workers and uh, highest number of people are on the front line and because um, not not uh, more people hold like a managerial posts or a leaders or anything and that's a one risk or a challenge we the NHS is facing. Second thing is related to the health. As you can see, we are higher risk with the, you know, most people, BAME communities are more at higher risk with the diabetes. And obviously, you know, the secondary goes to the, the other health conditions. That's, uh, you know, personally because of their uh, background and things. They're one of the health condition is with the, uh, we call it as a comorbidities. So those kind of things are there and I think identifying them and separating those kind of community will be a good idea taking the do you think a lot of people think it's just about lack of confidence and fear they, they, they don't say we are, you know people pride that's one of the thing I think we, uh, another thing is with the culture culture is another big big thing even even now if I tell you now going back to my uh, Indian origin country even some family members are tested positive but they don't want to tell people but whereas I was I, I told openly to everybody all my families and some people will say why did you tell everybody you know this is a culture you know but there's nothing wrong in because of for living here for 20 years I learned that telling people or the communicating people will reduce the risk because people won't come to my house and you know I, I will keep them safe but there in back home it's a different because they think that it, it is a, uh, what you call, if I got something COVID, it, it's not nice to thing to tell people. And one is a culture is another big thing. And second thing is people are not open. You know, people are quite shy in nature. You know, the, that's uh, another thing which is a bit difficult for anyone to uh, deal with. And uh, that's why we need to come out of the, uh, that kind of culture and uh, we need to be open. What would you say to somebody from the Bay community? I mean, the message for the BAME community is, you know, just, you know, you, you just seek support from your family first and then go and ask for the help, you know, like uh, look for the help from your managers first if you're a working person or anything or look for your local councils and look for your any kind of, you know, telephone or online supports and uh, those kind of supports you look. 
and most important thing is a this is a pandemic situation and don't get panic and that's a panic is not nice at all because it changes your the whole personality first you know in the inside your body hormones changes and you know that will affect you more physically mentally and you know the psychologically it affects the whole health and that's why you know you need to be very strong and don't give up don't lose hope and be strong and have a positive attitude and think that you will come out of it and uh, there is always positive thinking is better and be aware that there are people out there who really want to help you. I mean, they're in a, you know, this out for the club chief, they, are really, they, they, they really want to publicise this and they really want to offer this help them. Yeah. So I, I, I didn't get that. There are people who actually want to help. Yeah, definitely they want to help, yeah. So, I mean, they, they definitely want to help and uh, they need help. And uh, it, it will be a good, good, great idea to do that one, uh, especially for a BAME community. And uh, I mean, this kind of thing, once you set up, you know, <coughs> it's not uh, the world is going just, it's not necessarily just for the COVID reason. There will be a lot of other things or other challenges we'll be facing. So that this idea will be the pioneer work for any kind of uh, people who are in need. And it's a good idea to go ahead with this kind of projects. Uh, yeah, finally, I mean, you know, somebody that you have, because of who you are, you have the support. But it must be awful for people who don't have that level of support in the BAME community. We're just trapped in a flat somewhere, terrified. That's true, yeah. I mean, there, there are, I heard about some stories like, you know, some people who are not even coming out of the house or the flats or anything, they just get locked inside. And uh, some people, you know, they're just like me. I mean, because I am taking everything is a positive way. I mean, you can't stop what happened or, you know, this has all happened. But some people are just sitting on the laptop whole day. Oh, I, I watched three movies today. I watched four movies today, which is not nice, you know. And I think those people need to be motivated. And this kind of projects will definitely bring the positivity in them, motivate those people and, you know, and help them. And, you know, once they help the individual, um, easily it will spread to the communities and it will... It will be it will be a good idea for a good nation and the healthy nations. So that's great. Very good. Thank you so much. Okay.